for joining me with another episode of James One Child Bear Review. Uh, today we're going to look at Porter, the style of American Porters specifically. Uh, and we'll talk about Porters in general. And today we're going to be reviewing the Southern Tier Porter Dark. Or actually, at most sites, it's actually just listed as Southern Tier Porter. Now, um, I picked this up in Ottawa the last time I went for Halloween. And it's a fairly recent offering for Canada. They have carried the Southern Tier IPA for quite at least a year or two now, um, but you're kind of yes, testing the market or whatnot, you know. And this was finally released for us and released. Um, now it's it's 5.2% ABV and it's a standard 12 ounce bottle, 355 mils. But I wouldn't actually I wouldn't have known about the ABV if not for this additional label in the back because the the rest of the labels are generic American labels. They didn't even you know adjust it for the Canadian market. I guess they weren't certain whether this would be um, selling well or not, so I guess it's just a bit of a test um, release. And Southern Tier is a brewery out of Lakewood, New York. Um, really, it's located in the Southern Tier region of the state, so hence the name. And they only got founded in 2004, so it's a fairly recent craft brewery. And Lakewood is a small village, it's not in a town, so they're probably the biggest business um, around. Um, they're quite, you know, they're quite a versatile brewery. They brew a range of beers, including quite a few seasonals and quite a few special releases. And um, some of the beers are just available in the local area, so not for export, not for you know, distribution across the country. Um, I might actually get another brew, another brew from this um, brewery in a few weeks from now. But for now, let's review the port. So let's talk about the specifics of the style, a little bit of the history. And look at the beer, should be good. So porters in general is an English style of beer and, um, and the name came from the 18th century when this beer was immensely popular amongst the river and street porters in London especially. Um, people yeah, people who carry stuff for money. Um, porters are darker beers and sometimes they're very opaque brown kind of color, sometimes even bordering in black really. Um, the, Brewed using roasted malts, so just chocolate malts, and that hence the flavour is very dark. Um, hoppiness can vary quite a bit because you know sometimes uh, porters are quite bitter, sometimes they're fairly mild, and sometimes they're sweet, sometimes they're not very sweet. You usually get a nice chocolatey uh, coffee taste to them. And then stout, which is a you know sort of a branch of, of porter style, is a different thing. I'm not going to talk about that now. Uh, American porters, essentially, um, many brewers that um, started out in the States, especially during the craft beer revolution recently, um, have you know have been found of the style and they you know, sort of came up with their own um, sub style if you will. So American ports are not largely different from the original English porters. And probably you know the most claimed ones out of England today are probably Fuller's uh, London Porter and things like that. I've tried that one, it's quite good. Um, but for American porters sometimes they're oak aged, not in this case but you know, sometimes they're quite, quite a bit different. Um, sometimes they use, you know, the, the brewers use a real chocolate, a real coffee, to add an extra layer of flavour. Um, no, they like to experiment with this style, but um, ABV wise, usually four to seven percent. I think five, six, higher fives so and low six is probably the, the, the medium. Um, yeah, so that's that's all really. It's a very, uh, very, you know, it's a very a quiet taste kind of style. Some people don't like them from the start. Some people like them, but uh, some people usually find them a bit too bitter and too intense at first. But then they get used to them and really um, learn to appreciate the porter style. Right, so crack it open. Let's do it. Quite a nice cap. It's black and white, but it has the logo and it's established here, uh, brewing company out uh, of Lakewood, New York. I'm going to be using my um, Samuel Smith glass. Good for stats, good for porter as well. Nice uh, dark brown colour to it. Yes, I didn't pour it too aggressively, um, but the head's still quite good. Get about a finger or not. Fairly carbonated, pretty much opaque, but a nice ruby red glow. But you know, I wouldn't say this is clear at all. Um, Light brown head, kind of soapy, but looks nice. 
course, this, this is um, quite a big glass for this 12 ounce bottle. But you know, it's, it's good for releasing all the aromas out. And it smells quite good for porter. Up front, a nice roasty um, espresso kind of um, scent to it. Fair amount of hops as well for the floral um, aroma. I'm thinking dark fruit. All the typical styles in a good porter, really, but I'm trying to think if there's anything that's um, different in this one. Certainly nothing that's um, you know that makes me think it's kind of off. It's, it's very right on where it's supposed to be at. Cheers. Nice full body uh, porter. Mm. So this one, um, remember I just said about um, some porters being bitter, some being uh, sweet. This is fairly sweet. Um, the bitterness is very mild, so it mostly comes from that coffee-like, roasty um, emulsiveness. Mmm, dark chocolate, and then in, in the background you get it, that um, plum raisin kind of composition. Medium to full body, I'd say. Very, a very nice full taste to it. Um, I took it out of the fridge a few minutes before I started this review, so I think the temperature is just perfect for this one. Because you, you know, porters are not like imperial stouts or anything. You don't want to serve them. Uh, you don't want to let them warm up too bit too much. So right away, you get that roastiness. And then it goes into the sweetness, a bit of floral hoppiness, um, and then the finish is sort of a lingering, even tobacco-like, coffee tobacco-like combination uh, with a bit of that uh, fruitiness, I guess. Kind of reminds me of uh, St. Ambrose uh, Open Step a bit, essentially stabs of porters, so but definitely it's a bit more smoky and roasty. I'll get back to you in a moment, but it's a very good uh, port. Yeah, it's a very good enjoyable beer actually, a good, a sessionable, quite sessionable beer. It uh, has enough body to it, has enough flavour, nice roastiness, chocolatey and malt in it. A uh, touch of caramel, a bit of dark fruit, a bit of hops, everything, you know, everything's there. It's a very solid performer, but I wouldn't say it's outstanding, but you know what, it's very good. I've only reviewed one other porter prior to this, that was a, a Mill Street Coffee Porter. And I like this Southern Tier Porter better than that. So that was a 7 out of 10, this is going to get a nice solid 8 out of 10. Uh, because it, I didn't find anything that, you know, that's very special about it. But it's a nice solid example of style, you know, if you, if you don't know much about porters and you've tried this, you can be pretty much certain that uh, you've tried the proper porter. So good job Southern Tier, so 8 out of 10 Southern Tier Porter, and that does it for this episode, so see you guys later, stick to the